Hello there everyone, welcome back. This is going to be the final match I've had with Solari on Saturday. At least with my streak of games that I had. And then once this video is all done there, there's going to be, what, two more matches before I can put the championship behind me finally, I think. At least that's what I want to say. And I did have a match before this actual recording there. There was an extra one that I'm not leaving out that was from between yesterday and this one here, but... It was an incredibly short match there, pretty much short-lived, and the main reason for that, though, is I decided to put over what is it, my overlords, to give, equip them with the Augur Disruptor, and I decided to try something different for when he selected a Space Station Assault as Defender, so my strategy was to try and just Kamikaze the Station with a bunch of Augur Disruptors, and sadly, that failed miserably there. It sounded promising on paper, maybe I rushed it a little bit too early, but... Once my fleet died down, the majority of my fleet anyway that got destroyed, I didn't have much standing force for a second match at least, so... It was a little bit of experimentation, probably not all as exciting as it sounds, but... The main implementation I made with the Overlords is the fact that I do have the Augur Disruptor on him now. Which, considering I'm not feeling a Dauntless for this match, I decided to go with four cruisers, that should still be pretty damn effective at at least deterring his bombers deterring yeah deterring his spotting hopefully gave me a, a good aggressive aggressive posture when I get in close and of course it denies his micro warp jump as we prepare to push on forward there he's got his usual was it protector sase and custodian and another thing that I decided to do a little bit different here is my overlord the one that I'm using for decoy torpedoes is actually on a separate hockey this time so what this does, it makes it so much more simple and a lot more easier for me to get the decoy torpedoes off. Just have it set on its proper heading as he flies another frigate into his mind, sounds like. So, this seems to be a constant thing. It's al it almost makes me wonder if he's doing it to try and even the odds a little bit. As weird as this may sound, because the warrens aren't going to really do a whole lot regardless. So, nonetheless... I'm still in the work of figuring out this decoy torpedo strategy there, as it seems to be working decently well at drawing off some of the custodian fire. It's hard to say how many of those torpedoes have hit, though. I know the protector and the custodian are pretty wide ships, but it seems like a few of them may have just missed there. I know, if nothing else, the repair did go off, so I'm bearing some fruit. Ideally, after watching all these matches, playing a little more slower, just trying to soften them up a little bit more with torpedoes if I feel like I'm getting the hits I want might be a good strategy before I commit. As I'm going to point out now, I am getting a lot of hits on these protectors. As you can see right there, that was like four torpedoes right there. That was a beautiful salvo. You could not ask for anything better than that, huh? If only that was on the custodian, that probably would be the best result. As he promptly decides to snipe the Widowmaker down, which could be a bit of a problem. Although I do have the Dictator with the beacon down, or was it the Recon Probe? I just again need to make sure the Custodian Shields are down and have enough of an open mind to drop it down so at least that way he has no attempt to salt run and get out like he's been trying to do. When his Custodian's by itself, that seems to be when he cuts and runs a little bit. And hell, if I just salt run and stay hidden there, then I could just stalt the clock for most of those matchups as it were. But in the end, since he's the defender, I'm kind of forced to have to push him when it does probably go to that result there. As I saw it run, I back off there a little bit, dodge the secret missiles, and as a result, do dodge the second railgun. Not so much the third one, but hey. If nothing else, two railguns were expended and only one of them actually hit a target that's of note. Probably would have liked to keep the Widowmaker alive, but it shouldn't be too terrible considering he doesn't have the air cache favor to just kite me outside my sensor range and this may prove to be a mistake but I also switched back the overlords extended sensors for the shield recharge brought them back because I feel like I wonder if I actually need them considering his slower speed that he's now utilizing especially since I do again have the dauntless and I did have a Widowmaker for this match anyway that promptly gained sniped down I try more and more to have it hang back a little bit just to kind of bait out the railguns and hopefully just make dodge them all together by being so far away. Need to get that figured out a little bit first it seems like because he's got it on the first try there. At least in that case 
with that railgun. If you can expend all of them, then I probably could afford to lose the Widowmaker. But nonetheless, we tried the deal with these Manza Bombers, and I don't know if you heard that there, but there was an actual insubordination. There was an actual insubordination on one of his ships, and that's when I decided to dive on it aggressively. I know, I'm pretty much assuming it's the Protector that's heavily damaged, or not heavily damaged, but 30% damage that triggers that insubordination. So I'm going on in, getting ready to do the attack, because it could have also been just from the frigate dive, but take a look at that, folks. Have a look at all that damage I did to that Protector already. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Now, if I wasn't so aggressive with this uh, Dictator, I may actually keep it alive long enough to s deal with these Manta Bombers, but as it stands now, it just becomes cannon fodder. What seemed like such a promising start was ruined a little bit, probably because I used the Bombers on the Warrens, I'm not going to lie. That may be proving to be my missed downfall there a little bit. Because the Dictator is a bit of a problem. I was, of course, questioning its utility before. Trying to see if I can squeeze in extra time for the firepower. But as it stands now, it's not going to contribute anything at all. Aside from maybe trying to shoot down a couple of Manta Bombers earlier. But nonetheless, a little bit of Constellation Prize. Both the Protector and Sasa are gone. Both died immediately at the same time. And that's a good result regardless of losing a Dictator. Now it's just a question of how to deal with this damn uh, Custodian. Because again, he's going to try his kiting and running maneuver a little bit there. As I try to silent run my ships, but of course with his extended sensors, I'm just barely within his sensor range. Just barely within his sensor range, but I'm going to try and see about dealing with that. I got my Overlord coming in, trying to protect it there, trying to shoot down these fighters best I can, but... This is looking pretty. This is looking pretty grim for my poor ship. I'm about to lose one Overlord. It seems like yeah, Manta bombs do go in. Any micro warp jumps out, and without the dictator, I couldn't stick a beacon on him. Which is a bit of a problem that's going to have now, because we're going to go for a little more of this cat and mouse game. I could just stay silent, run, but in the end, it seems like not having the extended sensors is a bit of a problem. But even then. Another problem I'm noticing, for one I'm trying to chase him, is I don't have the means to be able to hit him with my broadside weaponry very well. All I have is like two lances, and if I were to turn my side to him, that's how he's able to stay at distance. Just get outside of my sense of range for another assault run regardless, so... It's a bit of an awkward situation. Not having actual... was it? The beacon more than anything, really. But again, losing an Overlord probably was a big problem. Because two extra lances would at least allow me a good amount of chasing potential. Because I'm pretty much not going to get to utilize my macro batteries at all if he's running from me all the time. As I do, of course, turn to deal with the Warren there. I try to keep outside his range a little bit. If only a little bit there. Because it seems pretty fruitless at this point trying to go after the Custodian. And with this Warren potentially spotting me coming up from behind to reveal my ships at an inconvenient time, I don't want it to... Give him an easy time with the Manta Bombers, ideally. Nonetheless, this seems like a bit of a poor performance what had such a promising start, though. It ultimately comes down to the fact that even though the the Dictator was ramming the, the Custodian, I, it kind of blocked and obscured me noticing the Bombers coming out. It really was sending the Bombers out to deal with the Wardens, or at least having the fighters out, because apparently there were no fighters to deal with the Mantas, regardless of whether I fresh them or not. So Power Rams were not of note. Power Rams were not as useful as they could have been. As I get an opportunity to engage this thing, but it emphasizes the problem I'm ha gonna have. I can't use my macro batteries very well, and they would be damn good at shooting the rear here. But of course, turning my side to him just means he has a window to get outside of sensor range. Doesn't matter if I have extended reach or not, so... I probably could warp out here right now, because there's going to be an interesting little thing about this match I've, that I only realized until this later on there. And I think, yeah, what I think it is, is that he doesn't actually field an art protector there. So, for a second match anyway, so I'm wondering if he has no protect other protectors with the Earth Cache favor. 
or upgrades for that matter, is what I'm coming to think of. So he's probably infested so much in his two strongholds, his custodian, and at least the Sauces and everything else that has the Earth Cash favor, and he doesn't have the actual renown because of the extra upgrade slot to afford even basic equipment to a second protector, which actually I could just warp out now and that gives me a lot of potential for the second match there. I want to argue anyway. I want to argue, as it stands now, I'm not doing the damage I need to, even as I'm finally getting close, because he's just going to launch his bombers here at point blank range and then just micro warp jump out once again. And then I'll be forced to warp on out. Since there'll be no way I can actually kill his ship right now, due to the adaptive deflector and his ability to just wetter so much of the damage, too. Like I said, I don't feel like extended sensors was going to be really helpful in that regard. Unless I had the second overlord, then it might. Because at least then I have actual weapons that can shoot them while I'm chasing them. So, that was not a match I'm really happy about. But, I destroyed the protector and Sase really damn quickly early on. That's a plus, but it fell apart trying to chase after his damn custodian. Which is kind of funny considering it's still, it goes the same speed as mine. He just got the capacitor recharge. Was it for the combustion gauge? It's the only thing he has going for him there. That and the micro warp jump, I guess, with the extended sensors is a bit of an issue too for trying to chase him. So, even with all these auger disruptors, I need to make sure I do the damage I need to when the initial engagement starts. I need to do something crippling to him. If I'm going to. At least have win these battles straight up, because otherwise he's just going to warp on out at any, every opportunity. Hell, if I continue to chase him, I'd be willing to bet he's just going to keep on running until the micro warp jump comes back up. And I, it's entirely likely by the time I pushed him into the corner, that would have still been available. And he would have done the same thing as before. Just micro warp jumped out through my army, through my fleet, and just kept on running, so... I don't think extended sensors would have helped that much. It's really the Widowmaker or something that can at least have decent lance fire. Yeah, like now I'm feeling the da regular Dauntless there, which will be useful in this regard because it does have the extended sensors, it does have the extra speed to be able to get out of reach should the Manta Bombs be coming out of it. And. Well, really, I just have lots of close-range firepower, so I'm going to do a lot of the same as before. Get in close, get in aggressive. At least try to, but... I need to be good about my uh, torpedoes. What is it? My decoy torpedoes. Because I don't think they're nearly as effective for this matchup. Because you can't get better results than just forcing insubordination on a protector before you even get visual of it. That's probably the best possible result I could get out of that match, if nothing else. So... If I could do it again, that would be nice. That would be really nice. But, right now we're seeing something a little bit different here. Eight ships. And one of which is just looking like, anyway, the Custodian. So, I'm wondering what he's fielding here. I told you before how he did not feel the protector for this match. So, with eight ships, I'm wondering what the hell he has. And it turns out, he actually has a Dalif. The, what is it, the Emissary Light Cruiser that brings two warrants with it there. That is what his uh, other cruiser is for his fleet. Otherwise, he has a Sauce still with the Custodian there, hitting the Stealth Alloy. So, if anything else, this potentially is better for me. Less, what is it, he doesn't have the Seeker Missiles at least, which probably aren't as big of a deal as they probably are. If, so long as I keep my proud to him and... I keep my ships decently close together enough so that the point defense at least has a chance to shoot him down. But there he is trying again to snipe down the Widowmaker. So I probably should think more about hanging this back until the last possible second. Because in all honesty, does this Widowmaker need to be up with the rest of the fleet there? At least with the Dauntless, because the only thing that I need to spot early is probably the Wardens. And he just suicides them over to me anyway, so... I could almost consider leaving that Widowmaker in the back there until emergency. Until I... Until the last possible second, quite frankly. Because it has the speed to just avoid 
the custodian all together, so long as it has enough distance for it. At least that's what I think anyway. And hell, I already discovered the wardens already, because I kind of tried to use this Dauntless as a bit of a decoy. I tried to treat like the Widowmaker as well, and apparently he didn't bite. Or apparently he didn't think it was a Widowmaker either way. Nonetheless, I do spot this at the same race as I would with Widowmaker regardless, so... It doesn't impact me all that much, especially now I have this gas cloud to kind of keep myself hidden. And Auger Disruptor is going to make sure this thing survives this Manta Onslaught that's about to arise. So, we deflect that attack relatively well. Seeker Missiles aren't going to hit anything. Hell, they almost hit his own Wardens, which would have been a nice little bonus there, I would argue. And we're just trying to clean up this mess here. While he's doing just very light damage to the rest of my fleet. My torpedoes, as I said before, have not been as effective as before. And quite frankly... I think I'm engaging a lot sooner than the last match there, so I don't get as many torpedo shots as I would like. Not to mention the fact they don't get the damage they would like, since there's no actual protector this time. He has just the Sauce and the F Custodian this time. Which is definitely different. It's still Earth Cash, without a doubt. It's still Earth Cash, but I told you there's a Dale for around. It's hiding somewhere in this mist here, and I'm not sure where. I don't realize it's a day off, but I know there's an, uh, at least a couple other ships around. I'm just assuming maybe they're messengers. Which, I don't connect all the pieces just yet that he has probably no other Earth Cache ships, because I destroyed two of them already in the first round. These are the last of his Earth Cache ships. Which goes to paint out what his strategy is going to be. As I destroy the deck, I destroy the engines. This is like the best start I could ask for. Although it doesn't... It helps when I get 50, 50 armor on the rear there, perfect rear shots to kind of cripple them. And since everything has Master Gunners, there's a decent chance one of them could get a critical hit of some kind. I just wasn't expecting to destroy both the deck to cut his sensors in half and the engines to keep him from running away. Very nice result, Fair, definitely a lucky result. One or the other would probably be good a good odd of happening there, especially since I've been prioritizing the generators all this time. In all, practically all these matches on Saturday with uh, Solare, and never broke once, I don't think. So finally, I'm getting some value out of those critical hits. Finally getting a little bit of value, because the generators probably would have been better to shoot down the long-term matches, but I wasn't prepared for his warp out to Custodian. I was not prepared for that at all, as I burnt all my lightning strikes trying to get extra hits on him to slow him down. Ideally get some kind of temporary damage on the generator or deck maybe Something that would help contribute to hunting it down a little bit. That's why I burnt all of them How the hell was I supposed to know he immediately warp out? He has it the other matches especially when it's the lone ship, so He micro warp jumps this sase out. He decides to switch out uh, What is it the combustion gauge whatever upgrade you have before for the micro warp jump in the case for these sases because I know for a fact they didn't have them before, at least, the uh, Micro Warp Jump. So I'm going to hunt this thing down. Sadly, Torpedoes, he gets the shoots down the ones he need to. But we're doing a good job hunting him down. This Dauntless alone could pretty much clean up the mess with this Lance and even some good ramming, if I were to ram him right now. As it stands, I just got to figure out what his strategy is, because nothing else has revealed itself. I'm assuming it's still like frigates and messengers hitting around. Because I know for a fact the Wardens, at the very least, have the Stealth Alloy. So now we're going to have the grim realization about what his ultimate strategy is. He is stalling out the clock, folks. The Dalef is over right across this asteroid belt there, and I know that's a fact because he auto-casts his bombers after my, was it, my Cobra momentarily. And then we're going to have ourselves a wild goose chase trying to chase after him. He quite literally has two Wardens and a Dalef just camping in the corners of the map there, all separated from each other, and I have to hunt them down. That was his strategy this entire time. So, to save everyone some time, we're going to go to the third match, or at least the end of the second match, because I do hunt these ships down. I get a nice wide pattern arc as I see the bombers there giving away the Dalef's position at least. And, like I said, I spread out, do a nice little 
what is it, sweep on the maps there. I basically have all my ships basically 10,000 units away from each other to maximize my sensor coverage and just diligently hunt them down. It takes me about 10 minutes because there's like 3 minutes left on the clock by the time I gra fu what is it, grab the final warden, which is actually over on the top right of the main map. It was actually behind the rest of my fleet as I'm boosting away now. So enough talking, let's get, let's put this damn, uh, menu, let's, ah, what am I saying, let's just put this behind us. Okay, so it's like I said there, he hid the warren in each corner of the map there, it took some time, it took some work, it took a lot of spraying out my fleet there and trying to pincer them, but we managed to hunt them down, and I just, in here I was hoping all this time that we were going to have real matches all this time. With the earth cache. He would very likely not try and do this maneuver again, but apparently I was wrong. Apparently I was completely wrong, but he doesn't get the benefit in all, any of this. He does not get his victory. We are going to a third match. And like I said before, he does not have any more protectors with Earth Cash favors, so we're going to go to the third match, and I'm not exactly sure what happened to the custodian, but he chooses not to field it. Instead, the final match is going to be two strongholds and a Sasane Protector. These two ships, the Sasane Protector, have absolutely no upgrades on them. So I think we are starting to figure out the weak link to this fleet composition. It turns out, after all these matches where I was questioning if I should go after a Custodian, because why destroy a Protector when he has two more of them with potentially the same upgrades? As far as ter in terms of an attrition war, how would that actually benefit me? Well, as it's going to turn out, this benefits me a lot more than I realize. Because now, we got two cruisers that are ba basically a, sh a shadow of their former self. They have no adaptive deflector, no extended shields, no extended sensors, no enhanced bombers. They got nothing. Absolutely nothing. So... These things are going to fall apart so quickly, at least their shields are, just at long range alone now. It'll take me a little while to figure it out, but this is going to be fun when I do. I make them the full priority there, trying to shoot them down and try to be mindful of where his stronghold... Well, I, I have no idea about the stronghold at this point. I'm assuming he's feeling the Castonia again, as I said, and what, what he normally has, because he still has... Two Saucés, well actually he has one Saucé left because I destroyed two of them in the second match. And he has, you would think, two more Protectors with the same favors or at least upgrades of some sort. So I'm going in with the same mindset here and I'm trying to play the little bit safer with the Widowmaker I think. I'm starting to try and not depend on having a Widowmaker with the rest of my fleet. But, once I see that he has four ships there and he's right up. I know exactly what he's fielding. I'm already getting myself prepared for strongholds there. As he's in the minefield, for some reason he decides to not stay in the minefield. I ultimately really question this, because, hell, he's making it really damn obvious where his ships are. If he stood still just for a few seconds, at least they would be hit and I would have to guess which of those two asteroid belts he was in. Because he had his choice of... He had his choice of asteroid belts to charge that beamin. As it stands now, he's just squandering that charge. Thankfully for him though, he does have one in the middle of the map, which is where we're going to end up engaging eventually, so... He could still get that charge, but I still question that some. Hell, I seriously, seriously wonder why not use a stealth alloy for these things, because it seems to work so damn well when I played his town when they first came out. In fact, that was like the first upgrade I had for his strongholds, which just get the stealth alloy, put them in an area to charge their beam up. Nothing too terribly predictable, ideally, but at least then, I can just harass with my air cache protectors at least, bait them into a unsuspecting area of the map where then the stronghold can pounce and ideally just murder, instantly kill, whatever ship is in its fate. Whatever ship's going to get hit by his cutting laser, quite frankly. Especially if I have their shields down. Ooh, and I feel bad for all the space marines I just massacred with that stronghold. Hell, there's even one infamous video there where somehow, somehow, I think latency was probably involved, but I took out 
like 800 health of the battle barge instantly. I don't know how it happened. I'm pretty certain it was latency though. Even though I was his host, the server, the other player may have had a great deal of latency there because I know for a fact my bombers were already flying back after that damage was dealt. I couldn't tell you what exactly happened there, but it was a moment to remember, without a doubt. As we continue to deal with these torpedoes, it's a little bit different with them actually having dumbfire torpedoes and then having like a handful of seeker missiles to punish me if I try and boost and reveal myself. So a little bit of an awkward predicament, but he doesn't have at least any wardens to kind of spot for him. Hell, his strongholds are still not in the asteroid belt. As I try to continue to soften him up as much as I can, because it worked so damn well in that first space station assault, where they were practically out of serve their health already by the time I revealed them. They were not even close to the asteroid belt, let alone the space station, so... I'm hoping, really hoping I can get some good torpedo hits in. Hell, I'm even using decoy torpedo strategy again to try and increase the likeliness of that, but... The protectors actually in hindering in getting in the way of this, and this is where I realize I, it's either now or the next time I try and prioritize the systems that he does not have any upgrades. I am I'm aware of this fact. I'm checking the protector once I detect it as well, and then these things become my full priority. These things become my full priority, and I tr intend to murder them go full out with them, because hell, look how much easier those shields die when they don't have adaptive deflectors. Isn't it a bl blah. Isn't it a glorious thing? It almost makes Tau a, a race you can actually fight. At least at long range. Once they get in close, they still die relatively quick. It's just they have micro-warp jumps. Hell, they don't even have skill slots to emphasize my point on what the hell is going on here. And we, I think after all these matches, I think I found the ultimate weakness to Solare's fleet. Because he decided to feel two strongholds, I don't think I ever check their upgrades. But I'm hoping, I'm assuming they have like three, four upgrades at least, which because they're battleships, they are really damn expensive. It makes me really question why he didn't take Bastions instead. It makes me really wonder that, because at least then, they're a lot more affordable for the upgrades and all that. And I do lose, take a handful of critical hits, notable amount of damage quite frankly, as I try and just keep my distance away from the Demiurg. I do have shield transfers, I do have supercharged void shields, but for this poor, poor tyrant, it's not going to happen unfortunately. It's going to have to come down to my retribution and tyrant's ability to soak the damage. Because hell, even my torpedoes did very little damage. And at least that's what it's looking like. Unless his ships are slowly getting whittled down. This tyrant needs to be protected. It's like the only thing that took any real damage. But that's going to change in a moment as these torpedoes come in. Going to change in a moment. As the Dauntless san thankfully manages to block a lot of that. It blocks all that damage pretty much. But this tyrant is crippling right now. It's crippling right now. I'm using the gas cloud to the best of its ability there. Trying to jam. I have another jammer available too if I want to avoid more of this damage. But I'm trying to get those final lance hits in. Get the final lance in. Try and kill these two uh, auxiliary ships. Because despite how l weak they are, they should are a notable amount of damage. I try to go after them. And there's the kicker for you, folks. Two strongholds means... All two chances for insubordination for each ship he loses. He may be hating the RNG, but really, there's actually a respectable chance of one of those Demiurg actually insubordinating. I'm not gonna lie. It is 12%, I think, right? And when you add to the fact two of his ships were destroyed, and he has two strongholds that could potentially insubordinate, that is pretty damn likely to happen in most situations. Probably not all the time. It's definitely in his benefit, but I don't think it's too extreme, but I may have gotten a little lucky there. But hell, I could have just kept my distance from the Demiurg for now, force the micro-warp jump, and then just pounce them and get behind them, ideally.